Hey you all, I hope your day is going great. In this Django Forms tutorial for beginners, you will learn how to use Django Forms from the ground up. By the end of this video, you will know how to submit data with forms, what model forms are and how to use them, what bound and unbound forms are, how to use Django Crispy Forms to make working with forms easier, how to make your forms look better, how to create a custom multi-value field, and really everything you need to know to get started with Django Forms. First off, I want to clear up the confusion about what Django forms are used for. Remember that they solely live on the backend. However, you can use them for things like generating form HTML to render on the frontend or validating incoming data. A form is just a class which contains certain fields. Every field has a widget associated with it that is used to tell Python which HTML tag it should use for this particular field when generating the HTML for us that we can display on the client side. Basically, Django forms make our lives easier by taking care of common tasks. So I would say let's jump right in and see it in action. We want to start out by creating a new project. Use Django admin, then start project, and I'll be naming it Django underscore forms. Then we can change the directory. And simply use atom and dot. Now you want to create a new app called my app. So manage a pi, start app, my app. And we can now use manage go pi, run server. Okay. And now we can go into Adam. And first of all, we want to head over to the settings file and simply register the new app. Okay, and now we want to start configuring our URLs a bit to lead us to a view where we can finally start experimenting with forms. I hate this comment, so just remove it. And then we can create a path. As soon as the user hits the index route, we want to first of all include the myapp.urls. And we of course have to import include as well. And we can now simply Ctrl C this entire file and go to the my app and Ctrl V. So simply just copy it over. And as soon as we are here, we want to have a path for the index as well. So if nothing changes, we want the user to be led to views.contact. And now we can go into the views.py file and create a new contact view. And this will for now return an HTTP response contact view. Let's just make sure to import it from django.http import HTTP response. Hopefully everything works out. Now module named myapp.urls. Okay, what's going on? I guess we have to restart a server. And of course, make sure to import the views from dot import views. Okay, that's now working. And we can simply make the migrations. Okay, and now we want to start by making our first form, and this will be a very simple context form, which we are just going to use to capture some values as soon as the user of our application wants to contact us. And we want to go into the my app and create a new file called forms.py. And in here from Django, we want to import forms, first of all. And then we can go down and create our form, the class contact form. This has a subclass from forms form. And similar to models, we can now specify a variety of fields, such as the name, and we're going to set this to forms.char field. Then the email will be set to forms.email field. And I want to specify a human friendly version of this label, which is just going to be email with this little hyphen. And then we want the user to select a category for which type of request they are sending to us. So 
So we can set category equal to form store choice field. And the choices is an array of tuples. And first of all, the first choice is question. And the other choice is other. Okay. Of course, make sure to extend that if you want to. And then we want to select a subject. Form sort char field. And we will make that a required it's equal to false. And then last, we want to actually capture the message inside of a body. Form dot char field. And now we can specify a widget. And widgets are used for the actual HTML representation of our field. And the widget in this case is going to be form store text area. And for the other char fields, by default, it's going to be a text input. And in this case, we want it to be a text area for more space. Okay, and then let's go to the views.py from dot forms we want to now import our context form and we now want to return a render along with the requests and the template we want to render is going to be located under form.html and then we want to pass our form which you of course want to create first so form will be equal to contact form just an empty form with nothing special to it. And now we want to create a new folder called templates where our form.html is going to be sitting. So create that as well. And because I'm using Atom with Emmet, I can just simply hit this exclamation mark and then tap to auto generate some HTML for me. And inside of the body, we can now spit out our form with the normal Django templating syntax. And let's see what this gives us. Oh, what happened here? Okay. Name choices not defined. Oh, let's go back to the forms. And we have to set choices equal to whatever we are typing in here. And you can see that I'm now on my local host and what we get is a form that's not looking too good, but we're going to change that as well throughout the video. And you can see we have the name then the email category is this choices select field. Then we can provide a subject and body. But of course, we don't have anything to submit it yet. So that's for uh, up to us to create. Because as you can see, if we now right click and inspect, you see that we don't get a form tag by default. So that's what we have to provide manually. And we can just simply create a form. The action will be post. And inside of that is going to be spitted out our Django form. And then we of course also want to use the CSIF token. And at the very end of it, we want to have a new button with the type of submit. And this just says submit. Okay, that's working. And now that we have that, we can take care of submitting the data. So whenever we are inside of here, of course, up until now, we simply just created an empty form and forms are divided into two categories, one of which is an unbound form, this one, because it doesn't have any data associated with it. And the other type of form is a bound form, which we can use to get the data out of it because we have passed it some data already. And now we have to check whether the request.method is equal to post. And if that is the case, we want to set our form equal to contact form and instead of leaving an empty one to pass it the request dot post and this will populate our contact form with whatever the user tried to submit and because we know that we can never trust user input we have a specific method called is valid and that's what we can call as well so if form dot is valid then we can capture all of the fields we want to so we can set the name equal to form.cleanedData. That's what you normally use to get the data in a clean format. And then the name is going to be name. And then we can do the same with the email. 
info.cleansdata email. And we'll leave it at that for now because it's the same with the other fields. So we can just try to print name, comma, email. Okay. And in a form, make sure to change this to method instead of action. And now we can fill out all of our details. Jack and then email a dot afb.com and subject doesn't need to be provided and then body and now click submit and back inside of our terminal we can see jack and afb.com and at this point we can of course use it to send an email or do whatever with it save it to the database i don't know and next up we will cover a concept called model forms and it's quite useful because we can simply call a method which automatically takes care of saving the model to the database for us instead of doing it manually. And to demonstrate this, we are going to head over to the models.py file and create a class called snippet, which subclass is from models.model. .model. And this is only going to have a name. That's a char field with the max length of 100. And then a body. That's going to be a text field. And then we want to give it a string method just to represent it in a nicer way. Okay. And then we can go to our terminal and make the migrations again. And migrate. Okay. And because it's such a common workflow to generate forms out of models. That's why Django wanted to provide a model form to us. And I'll demonstrate how this works real quick. So we can go into the forms or pie again and create a class called snippet form. And instead of subclassing from forms.form, .form, we can subclass from forms.model form. And this is going to have a class meta where we have to first of all provide which model we want to use as a model for our model form. And in this case, it's going to be the snippet model. And then we can specify all of the fields. And we currently only have name and body. And of course, make sure to import the snippet as well from the models import snippet. And now we can go back into our booster pie and create a new view snippet underscore detail and just make sure to copy all of this basically will save us a lot of time and just substitute this one with snippet form and we can get rid of all of this because we don't need it and this one should be substituted as well and before we get into saving it we want to first of all print valid just to see that this is working and we want to of course input it as well and then we can create a new path and i'll be making this to snippet now go back into your browser and go to slash snippet and you see a completely new form of course with our same template and we can specify the name as snippet1 and the body as, I don't know. Okay, and you see valid, of course, because everything works fine. But still, we haven't really made a new model out of it. And to see this in a nicer way, we can register a model in the admin.py. So just use admin.site.register snippet. And then at the very top, we can from models import the snippet and to be able to access our admin view we of course have to create a super user as well and we do this via the manage.py create super user command just specify a password great and then run it again and now we can open a new tab and go to the admin route and the username should be whatever we use and then just the password and we see our snippets right here 
And if we didn't use model forms, of course, we would need to get all of the values out of the form that way and then create a new instance for the snippet like we normally do with snippet.objects.create. But in this case, we can simply, and look at this, call form.safe and it's all done for us. Awesome. So let's check this out in action. And the name is going to be ZK and the body will be whatever. And just hit submit. But if we now go into the admin, you can see that we have a new snippet without us needing to do any other work. And next up, what really bugs me is that this is looking so ugly. You know, all of the fields are aligned horizontally and that's not what we want. And to resolve this issue, we can use a package called Django Crispy Forms, which makes this a piece of cake for us. And we can install this package via pip. Pip install Django Crispy Forms. And as soon as that is done, we can rerun our server again. And now go into the settings.py. And we have to include it in our installed apps as crispy underscore forms. And the most basic thing we can perform with Django Crispy Forms is go into our actual template and at the top we can first of all load crispy underscore forms tags and then we can use the crispy tag on our form and after we reeled our page you can see that they are already aligned a bit nicer but still not what we want and because of this we can now go into our forms.py and over at the constructor of our contact form with the init method and if you haven't yet watched my Python OOP class, I'll leave a link to it down in the description if you want to check it out. I think it makes understanding this a bit easier. And instead of this, we can access the superclass, which is the form, and then call the init with our arguments and keyword arguments. And what crispy forms provides to us is a so-called form helper, which we can use to specify a variety of attributes inside of our form. And whatever we provide then can be used by Python to generate the HTML markups for us and that will of course save us from doing a lot of work. And first of all, we need to set the self.helper equal to form helper, which is a class provided by crispy forms that we can first of all import from crispy, crispy forms.helper. And then we also want to import from crispy forms.layout. There are two classes called layout and submit, which we are both going to use. And after the helper, we can specify self.helper.form method, which we can set to post, because of course the data should be posted to our backend, so we can do whatever with it. And if we were to save this, I'm just going to show you, we can just go into our form.html and just get rid of all of this. And instead of printing it out like we normally do, we can use the crispy tag like this, and then whatever form we pass to this, simply called form. And then we can also pass it the helper, which is form or helper. I headed over to getbootstrap.com and picked up the link for the CDN. And now we can use it to easily integrate bootstrap in our application. And I'll leave the snippet down in the description. You can just copy it or go to getbootstrap.com and pick it up yourself, however you want. So just paste that right here. Again, it's down in the description. And I also want to add a bit of styling to this body, just real quick, adding 20 pixels. Otherwise it's going to be touching the left edge, which I don't want. And now let's see how that looks. So just refresh and you see that we get some nice bootstrap styles. You can see that we still have no submit button and that's exactly what we can use the layout for that we imported here. And we can override the layout by setting self.helper.layout equal to a new layout. And in here we can specify all of the fields in the order we want them to appear in our form. And we want to keep the first ones, you know, all of these ones the same. So name, then email, and category, subject and body. Of course, you can change the order of them however you want to. And then we want to add a submit. 
and this will have the label of submit and we can specify a CSS underscore class and set it to btn success which is the nice bootstrap class we get and as you can see a submit button pops up like magic and we can use it normally just like we did before so name I don't know and then some email and hit submit and still we get our name and the email inside of our view because of course that's the only thing we were printing out and next up I want to cover a very specific field called the multi-value field and this one you can basically imagine as one field that contains many other subfields and we want to use it for the name in this case although it might not be the best use case but still it works so let's go ahead and we want to set name simply to name field create a new class called name field with subclasses from form store multi value field and first we want to provide it a constructor with args and keyword arguments and in here we can set all of the fields we want our multi value field to have and as I said, it contains many form subfields like these ones. And the first one is going to be a form store char field. And the second one as well. And what we want to capture in this case is the first name and last name. And at the end of that, we can simply call super so in it with all of the, first of all, fields pass the arguments and keyword arguments as well. And now we have to provide a function which is called compress. And this one takes in the data list. And as you can see, we have two specific form fields. And what data list does is it takes the value of each one of them and puts it into a list. And that's what we are getting inside of this data list. So for example, if the user types in tests for the first field, and none for the other field. Then what we get inside of data list would be equal to test and none. Just as a comment, that's what it will be equal to. And what we now have to do is represent this in any specific way. We want to be able to get it from the views and that could be custom to however you want it. But as we are getting the first and last name, we simply want to return an F string. And this one returns data list zero. And then with a space in between, we get data list with the index as one. And we are simply getting the string of first and last name with a space in between, like we would expect from a name. But as you can see, we still only have one input. And that's of course not what we want because we want the user to be able to pass two specific ones, as we just said, because we have two specific fields. And that's why we also need to override the widget and we can just go on top of that and create a new class called name widget with subclasses from form store multi widget and this also has a constructor with the attributes of none and then we call super dot init dot initialize And in here, we can now specify our particular input types, which we want this char fields in this case to have. And of course, we want them to be text inputs simply. We don't need a text area or anything other fancy like that. Just simple text inputs. So use form store text input. And the second one should be one as well. Okay, and then we also want to pass the attributes if we passed any. And this one has the counterpart of what we have here, which is compress, which is decompress. This takes in the self and the value. And the value is whatever this function returns, basically. So instead of us passing any data so we can get it in our view, we basically want to mimic what would happen if we took the data inside of the view and pass it to this, how Jenga should behave with whatever it gets. And in decompress, if we have a value, then we want to return value.split 
by the space character. And again, the data list is equal to first value and second value. Say comment. And after this, it's equal to first value and second value with a space in between. Oh really, I think this is less confusing. And in a decompress, at the beginning, value is equal to first value and second value. And at the end, we want it to be equal to a list of first value and second value again. And of course, this only applies if we have a value to begin with. But if we don't, we want to return just to empty strings like this. So we also have to go to the name field and specify the widget as name widget. Okay, so go back and reload. And you see that instead of one, we get now two separate input fields. And before we get any further, we want to go to the view supply and just simply print out the name only. So try it how this form works. As first name, we are going to use Bob and then Jackson. And email is still going to be the same, blah, blah, blah. And then we can try hitting submit. And we see Bob Jackson as a string. So there isn't any list of two separate values anymore. We basically took this list, which first had the value of Bob and second had the value of Jackson and turned it into this string, thanks to this method. And now with this decompress, what's going on, we can also return, let's say we were returning TE and RE, and we can see what happens. As you can see, we get automatically filled in whatever we put right here, if there is no value. And this is how the multi-value field basically works, and we can perform some more things with it. For example, use it for validation. So we can go to the tab and again from django.core.validators import the regex validator. And now in here we can set validators equal to a list and the first one is going to be regex validator. And this takes a regular expression. And of course, if we are expecting a name, we only want to be able to capture letters. So A to Z and uppercase A to Z. And then plus, which means at least one. And then the error message, if the user doesn't comply with this, regex should be enter a valid first name. And then in parentheses, only the letters. And copy this valid data over to the second one. And this should say enter a valid second name. And enter this one as the else clause. Because at the end of this, we would normally redirect the user to some kind of thanks page, so there's no need to clean the form afterwards. And let's just quickly fill this out again. Jackson. Body. And now we should get a warning as soon as we submit it. And you see, enter a valid first name, only letters. And as I already mentioned in the intro, the other big, big use case of forms is form validation, because we can never ever trust user input there are always going to be some people who put in gibberish to try to break your system. And that's why it's important to keep it safe that way. And of course, Django forms provide a nice way for us to do so. And that's why we should use them. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this part. And I know there's quite a lot of information to unpack. If you didn't really understand all of the object oriented concepts, which I put here, you can just go back to my OOP class, as I already said and just rewatch this video because it's really the gist of forms which you are going to be using over and over again because of course forms are an important part of web applications and yeah i hope you enjoyed this part if you did make sure to subscribe to my channel and leave a comment down below what else you want to see covered i hope to see you inside of the next one and cheers